I have a special episode for you today. The Staff of Light. And now this one has been a very delayed project. I started planning it about a year ago for last Halloween. I think I first mentioned it during the water wheel project. The prototype was really simple. Just a couple of watch batteries and an LED taped to a solid glass rod. It looked pretty cool though. And so I thought, how could I improve the design? Maybe put the LEDs inside of a clear tube and then the batteries also. And so I'm working on a five foot borosilicate tube here. I closed up one of the ends and I'm gonna go ahead and gather it up a little bit to blow it out into a sphere or an orb. I'm kind of thinking like a magical wizard staff here. So a nice large orb at the end would look pretty cool. And with that high heat there, you can see how quickly the end just gathers up there into a solid sphere of glass. And I wasn't sure, I was really thinking of keeping it just like this. This large orb would capture a lot of light. It would be very luminous. And this hollow cone on the inside, you can see once I pull it out of the flame, also is pretty cool. But now at the same time, I'm thinking if I blow it out into a larger sphere, I could probably fill it up with something and then it'll be kind of like semi-solid. So I might get kind of the same effect just with a larger orb since it's blown out. I'm just standing a few feet away from the torch, just kind of rotating it in the flame constantly so it doesn't slump with gravity. You might have noticed the new piece of artwork there on the wall. I thought it'd be nice to add a little bit of color to the back. It was getting a little bit kind of bland with just the blackness. With that blown out one last time, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in the flame to thicken up the walls a little bit. And now as it's cooling and setting up, the outside walls are going to begin to cool much quicker than the inside. So I'm gonna kind of bathe it in a soft flame to keep it warm. It won't fit in the kiln, so this will be a way to set it down gently. And so I'll go ahead and balance it on my hand here to figure out where the center of mass is. To pop open a hole and add a switch there. I'll mark it with some beeswax, which will vaporize in the flame and disappear. And lamp working, beeswax is used to lubricate and protect some of the tools. Brass molds, uh, flaring tools like the jacks especially. You don't need a whole lot either. A little bit will go a long way. Just some natural beeswax. And so I'm just heating up a small area and pulling out a little bit of glass to thin up the wall so it'll blow out very easily. Now I'll go ahead and blow into it to puff out a very thin bubble, which will melt open very easily in the flame. I'll just brush it in the flame and it's gonna tear right open there. And then that remaining thin glass will melt back very quickly. I'll go and heat it up and use my mini jacks to shape up a square for the switch. And now I don't want to open it up too much as it might start to jeopardize the stability of the center. Brush it on the very outskirts of the flame here to bring it down much slower so that it doesn't shock the piece as it cools. All right, well that's looking pretty good right there. And now for the inside of the tube. I wanted to add something that would diffract the light outward and kind of help illuminate a wider area. So I'm rounding out these five millimeter tubes. I'm gonna add some clear, white, and maybe even black frit. Frit is basically crushed glass. It's used for decorative applications. You have to be extra cautious though, as it contains glass dust. You don't wanna inhale that as you're working with it. And now with the tube full, I wanna knock out all the extra space or all the extra air in there. 
you'll see how quickly I get so much more volume just by knocking the frit more into place. And since I'm going to seal the tube up, it would eventually end up with this huge space in there as it would settle down over time. And I'm going to fill up the rest of that gap and keep tamping it down until it's completely full. Even though I've done this method quite a few times now, you don't really want to seal up things uh, with air inside. Any hollow work with tubes. That inside air might contract or expand, causing a negative pressure or positive, and maybe blow up your piece. But then you might want to do something like an hourglass, for example, a sand timer. So that one you would want to wait until it's cool, filled up with sand, and then glue it closed. And my sand timer is actually pretty accurate. It's uh, 28 seconds, I believe. I filtered the dust out of the frit and then even evaporated the water in the kiln. So it runs real smooth every time. Okay, here's the first test. There we go. And so I have three 5 watt LEDs wired up here in parallel. I did a couple videos on wiring up LEDs and batteries in parallel and series connections. Now this isn't really a wiring diagram, so it's probably not the best place to learn to wire, but the wire from the battery will end up going to all of the positives at the same time, and then through the LED to negative, and then back to the battery. Whereas the series connection, the LEDs would be wired more in a chain, one LED to the next LED to the next LED, and then back to the battery. And for that connection, I would need an 18 volt battery. For this parallel connection, I just need six volts. And so my idea here was to put a clear rod on the center to transmit the light through, and then the frit rods on the outside will help diffract the light out. At least hopefully, I think that'll work. And the clear rod will stay centered no matter how much I rotate it around because there's no room for the frit rods for it to move through. Now it's going to jam everything in there to wire up the switch. And now it's time to run the test. And it's working! Yes! So there's not much going on with the bulb here. Uh, there's a little bit of light coming out. So I'm thinking filling it with something or maybe a reflector. Let me see, I have some. Maybe cover this area up. I might do that. And so I can tell now that reflector does actually help quite a bit. I think I was just a bit blind at the time to really notice what was going on. Other than that it was working. And so I still kind of committed to filling up the orb with something. And so I was looking around the store and I saw this glow in the dark glue. I wasn't quite sure. I knew this was going to be a very pivotal point. I mean, there's really no going back once you shove a half a bottle of glue in something. <laughs> oh, this was such a big mess. A very glowy, glowy mess. But honestly, uh, I think it's going to work out. Um, it's very glittery glue. That's a cool thing. So feel free to comment with your thoughts down below on this situation. I'll let the uh, comment section figure out what's going on there. But uh, now for the LEDs, they started to melt themselves. I guess that's kind of the downside of putting three of them together like that. And so I decided to change up the design a little bit, kind of spread out the LEDs instead, and maybe try clear tubes instead of the fret tubes. I'll admit I should have done a little bit more testing with that before I made so many. It seemed like it was working, but it kind of had a tendency to block the light. 
You can't really see it in the video, but up close I could see how the intensity was kind of dissipating as it was trying to go through the frit. And so here, one of the wires is gonna be positive and the other one coming back will be negative. And the LEDs will be wired in the middle. I'll we'll have one LED on each end of the tubes shining inward while the third LED will be further up the tube, shining into the glow-in-the-dark orb. This wire wrapped around here will continue the positive connection down to the next LED and the negative one on the opposite side. This is 18 gauge copper power wire. I really like it for its stability. It's a good size for springs and coils. But it's good to mention here, I'm not an electrician or anything, so... Feel free to comment down below with any tips or suggestions, and always remember, safety first. It's time again to run the test. Oh, there it goes. Awesome. I'll have to snip the tube here in order to pull the wires out for the switch in the middle. And I'll have to prep it before I put it inside because I can't reach it from the outside. So that's why it's always good to plan ahead with projects like these and also test things out as you go. I'll wire in the switch and then bend some coils to contact the batteries. The prototype from last year. Even though it was simple, it was pretty cool. Just not bright enough. And so here is the Staff of Light. Oh. That's a bit brighter. Reflector on. So yeah, I think that's pretty good. That's pretty cool. My hand like right there over that reflector. It's time to test it outside to see how well it can fight the darkness. Here's my tree I planted back in second grade. It started out as a little branch, so it's grown quite a bit since then. And then again, so have I. All right, so I think that I should do it for now. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you join me on this lamp working journey. I'll be doing some more videos of setting up your studio and getting started melting your own glass. And so as always, stay melty.